a dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Telling a woman that she can't be an elder is a nonsense rule. If they claim to be in the body, we let them have it. Donald uh, Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. Heretics Christianizing the American dream. I said that, you, uh, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. Sawing is a blessing from God to make you rich. Treating Jesus like a lottery ticket. The Lord spoke to my heart. Been very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you with me. I'm asking you to brush your hair. Look at who's sharpest. That's what God commanded. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Master's Dog, episode 152. I'm your host, Norm The Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. So The Master's Dog is a podcast I do dealing with false teachers, false doctrine, false theology, anything that is a false truth that comes against the truth of God's word, like the John Calvin quote at the beginning of the introduction video, I bark, I make noise, I talk about it, I deal with it. Because that's what God has called me to do, to not be a coward. Uh, Only a coward would remain silent. I'm I'm not. I will not allow God's truth to be attacked and remain silent. So this started out as a podcast called Faith and Beliefs Refuted, where the guys over at Saints Saints Unscripted, formerly known as the Three Mormons, started a a segment of their podcast called Faith and Beliefs. And they started with the 13 Articles of Faith. And I said, this is a really good opportunity to respond systematically through these as they talk about them, why they don't line up with Orthodox Christianity. Well, they finished the 13 Articles of Faith and then moved on to other issues of theology and doctrine and history. A lot, Some stuff that is just pointless, but other stuff that is really um, something that needs to be talked about. So I committed to responding to all of those videos. And so there... I, I began Faith and Beliefs Refuted, and it went on probably 30, 40 episodes. And then at that point, I was like, I want to expand this to deal with other false teachers like Creflo Dollar and uh, who we're going to talk about today, um, Benny Hinn, Joel Osteen, Stephen Furtick, guys like that. And even beyond that, Atheist, Dan Barker, uh, Richard Dawkins, the, the Rational Response Squad that had become like just, you know, incommunicado i don't know whatever happened to those guys uh and so i expanded it out to that and called it the master's dog based off of the john calvin quote at the beginning so there's a little background for those who are new a lot of new subscribers this week mostly i think a lot of them came from the review of the video i did for damascus steel um the new video they put out called switchblade and go find that go check out unsolicited um and I'll be doing a, an album review as well, probably at the end of this week. We'll get that in and get a review of the whole album, which I have. I got to be the very first person to buy that album when they, they did the early release because I, I helped Zay the Blacksmith test out the uh, the interface. And so I was the first one to buy one. So, yes, I have it. I've listened to it. I love it. And I'll be reviewing it. So, but that's another podcast uh, today. Um, so again, new subscribers. A lot of that is from that, but it's also thanks to you guys who like the videos, uh, share the videos, comment on the videos. You have no idea how much your comments make the videos go through Mr. Algorithm. And I was calling him that before Space Jam. He sends the video out to more and more people who might like it based on the comments that you make. So please come at me. If questions, comments, snide remarks, I'll take all the smoke. Um, I won't ask you to like the video yet because we haven't really even started. We're still introducing um, the whole thing. Um, but you can subscribe and hit the notification button get all the content that I release here on the Evangelical Norm Network on YouTube. So we are going to talk about my man, my mellow, Creflo Dollar. Right. We've done a lot of videos about Creflo Dollar. He's been a false teacher of the week. I've talked about all kinds of different stuff. Denial of the Trinity, um, prosperity gospel, um, little gods, 
all the different things that this man has has preached and talked about. I mean, we've talked about him when we've done reviews of Ivy's albums, of Shine Lynn's albums, you know, False Teachers, um, and I can't think of uh, what am I to do, uh, Sh- uh, Ivy Connerly, you know, all of these things where guys address these false teachers. Creflo comes up. I mean, this guy comes up in a lot of these videos because, I mean, here's a guy that was like, I've got enough faith that God wants to give me a $64 million, bill, or million dollar airplane to fly around the world in and blah, 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 so I can fly back and forth from what, and I think it's New York to Atlanta where he has two churches that he does, who preaches both Sunday, both services on Sunday, he flies back and forth. Right, so here's a guy that has been a prosperity pimp for a long, long time, right? And uh, that's 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 who he is. That's what he's done. That's what he's known for. Um, yeah, there there have been little moments with that I've dealt with him where I mean he he's got into the gospel of grace and stuff like that, and I'm like, you're there, Creflo, but then you shift, and you're in this other spot, and so it's just so I don't know. I don't know. It's it's. I'm hopeful. I, let, let me say that. I'm, I'm hopeful for this guy, which I'm hopeful for all of these guys because they're preaching the name of Jesus. They're, they're talking about Jesus, whether or not they're using him, as Shailene says, treating Jesus like a lottery ticket. You know, if that's what they're doing, I mean, they're blaspheming him, but the name is still there. They're still somewhere in the word. They're still pulling scriptures out of the word. And we end up in places like this, what we're going to talk about with Creflo today. We end up in these places where... There is a um, some kind of a repentance going on, and we've seen it over the last. I, I want to say within the last year. I don't know if Benny Hinn may have been a year and a half, almost two years ago. It may have been longer. It's it, you know, time just crushes in on itself when you're as old as I am. Um, but uh, we've seen Benny Hinn uh, repent of prosperity preaching. A lot of the same, saying some of the same stuff that Creflo does in this video that we're going to look at here in a minute. But we've seen uh, Todd White. And this is one, you know, Benny Hinn, I was like, okay, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll watch. We'll see what he does. And of course, he right back to his old ways. Todd, uh, Todd White, I was like, this guy went like straight way of the master. I mean, he was, he was... I was convinced that he had watched some Ray Comfort videos, the way that he was sharing the gospel and repenting of some of the stuff that he'd done and not preaching this gospel. And he literally, there was one sermon where the gospel was clearly preached by Todd White. Has it happened since then? Not really. Again, zip right back into the old, old ways. So now we've got the same thing from my man Creflo here. There's a, I want to say there's an hour and a half video out there of him, hour and 20 minutes. Um, this, if you want to watch the entire uh, sermon that he did on tithes, um, it is out there. Um, there's a couple other people who have done commentary on it like I'm about to do. But we're going to take a look at this two, this was the best clip I could get. And this quality is the, of this clip, I don't know. Somebody like recorded it on on like a eighteen year old phone off of their television set or something. The sound isn't bad, but the the video quality of this is bad. So I apologize for that. But we're gonna take a look at Creflo um, at the beginning of this sermon, and he's basically repenting for the teachings that he's made on tithing. So I'm gonna let him talk, and then I'm gonna talk about it, and we'll deal with it, and then we'll move on. So here is. Creflo Dollar repenting about tithing. I want to start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. Okay, so let's just start here. Let's just stop here. Every pastor should be willing and every pastor should still be growing. None of us on this side of heaven have got it all down, right? We are all still growing. We are all still learning and, and whether it's from other pastors that we listen to other, 
uh, books that we read, just reading the Bible and the instruction of the Holy Spirit as we read at something and go, wow, wait a minute. I, I, I never caught that before. I've never, let me, let me step back and, and examine this. So every pastor should be willing to say, I am still growing. None of them are perfect. Not even mine. As, as great as a, of a preacher as Brian Sove is, and I love to hear his preaching, and I disagree with some of it. Um, Theology-wise, I mean, he started out not a Calvinist when I was a Calvinist. He caught up to me in Calvinism and Reformed theology, and then he like zipped right on past me to, to Doug Wilson levels of, uh, of Reformation. And um, I'm still a little bit behind, and I don't know that I'm going to fully catch up to paedo-baptism or post-millennialism. But, um, but again, nothing that we would break uh, fellowship on. I love my pastor. I love his preaching. I love all my pastors. I love all their teaching uh, and, and preaching. Kevin, Dan, uh, Kevin Love, uh, Kevin Griffin, Dan Burkholder, Brian Sobe. Um, amazing men of God. And I'm, I'm blessed to be um, underneath their, uh, their shepherding, shepherding um, shepherdhood, shepherd, uh, yeah, pastorship. Call it what you will, whatever. I'm making up words now. But all of them are still growing. All of them are still learning. All of them are still being molded and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So this is great. I mean, you know, the fact that he's willing to say this. And then he goes on to say, all the stuff that I've taught about tithing is wrong. Okay. Now we got to go back and look at a whole lot of stuff that he taught about tithing. Because, I mean, one of the things is it became this like works thing. of You're not going to heaven if you don't tithe. You know. It, part of the, the old um, song from Result No Compromise is, uh, you know, I can't remember, but something you will tithe or get shot, right? There, there was, the, and this was some of the teachings. So not that you would get shot, but again, your salvation was on the line if you weren't tithing correctly. So let's let uh, Creflo continue. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never under, understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. Okay, now see, here's somewhere where I'm like, okay, you say you've not been confronted with, with the gospel of grace, but I mean, three, five years ago, Three years ago, five years ago, it's as far back as I can think that I know that is God. I've seen him preach things about the gospel of grace. So, I mean, if being confronted by the gospel of grace is what has led to this repentance, this should have happened five years ago or three years ago at least, right? Because I know he's been confronted by the gospel of grace. I've heard it come out of his mouth. I've heard him teach it. And then immediately afterwards, throw in some prosperity garbage or throw in some other stuff that just is off the wall and, and go, eh, so, so maybe at this point, the gospel of grace is really broken through. And that's why it's leading to repentance now. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. But I will say that I have no shame at all as saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. Okay, now that's a huge deal. But again, we'll, we'll talk about more on this level uh, after he's done. But I mean, to say, throw away all the books and teachings and everything you've got that I've done. I mean, you, you don't get a whole lot of pastors that are willing to do that. I know I've had to do that. I mean, I was a I was a false teacher. I would have been on my own list. I would have been on my own podcast 14, 15 years ago as a, as a well, maybe I'd have to probably go back 16 years because at some point when I, when I was given a, a stipend to do some education and they said, you know, here's from... We are donating this money to you to in, in, increase your education. Use it on whatever you want. And I used it on Living Waters, Way of the Masters, School of Biblical Evangelism. And, 
And that was my stepping stone to reform theology. And so that was the point where I started going, I can't preach this stuff that I've been preaching. Some of this stuff is false. I mean, I was preaching open theism at one point in time. Just full disclosure, confession, here I am. I preached open theism to my youth group and my congregation. I was a heretic at that point. God has brought me along. Absolutely. But I've had to go back and say, get rid of these. I've had to go through and purge them off the internet. Old old sermons that I've done, I think five of them still exist. The, out of 300 that were out there on the internet at once upon a time. There are five of them now. Because as I've gone through and looked at them, I'm like, this is all bad teaching. So, I'm again, I'm very impressed that he's willing to do this. But we'll talk about that here in a minute. Because, again, full disclosure, I don't trust him. I've watched this man and followed this man. I feel like I know this man for almost 20 years of ministry. Even when I was a false teacher, I was still calling this dude a false teacher. Right? Okay, you know, talk about logs and specs. But I've been, I have, I have recognized the heretical teaching from him and Benny Hinn and uh, uh, Duplantis and guys like that for 20 years as a, as a professing believer. And you know, so I don't trust him. And that's why there are some things that I'm going to say when I'm done, when he's done. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected, and it's got to be corrected now. I may lose some friends. Preachers may not ever invite me no more, but I think I've already been through that, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Go with me in our text today in the... Okay. So, there you go. There is Creflo's repentance on the teachings that he did on tithing, throwing away my books. I may lose some friends. I'm doing this corrective teaching, blah, 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 blah. Here's, again, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, which I did with Benny Hinn and I did with Todd White. And here's a man that is coming out and saying, I am repentant. I am repenting of my sin of whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Great, Creflo. I'm going to, now we sit back and we watch and we see what you preach from now on. Do you continue on with the prosperity stuff? Do you continue on with you reap what you sow? If you sow this seed, God is going to bring it back 10 times because now instead of calling it off uh, tithing, you're calling it just an offering, but it's still the same kind of, you know, you get what you give and baba da 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 right? Is that what it's going to be? Or are you truly going to come around and go, Give what you can. Give sacrificially if you have to. But whatever it is that you can give to be a cheerful giver, which is what the New Testament calls us to be. I mean, we see scriptures about sacrificial giving. You know, the widow's might. She gave more in her little bit than all the others because it was sacrificial. But that is a, pre a descriptive situation and not a prescriptive Nowhere is Jesus saying you have to give your last dollar or your last dime or your last, you know, whatever. Nowhere is Jesus saying you have to do that. New Testament, the one place where it gives us a prescriptive manner in which we give is to be a cheerful giver. Give cheerfully, not begrudgingly. If your offering is causing you to go, ah, I really hate it. I got it. Don't do it. Because it's sin. It's sinful. You give what you can give. You you give what is right to give. Again, I'm the guy, I, I agree with and probably Todd Frill and some other people, that if you're deep in debt, you got to get that stuff paid off. You give what you can to the church, but get out of debt. And then take that and you give that. And if, you, if suddenly you can give more than 10%, then absolutely fantastic. If it's at 10%, 9%, 8%, it doesn't matter what the percentage is. 
It's are you giving cheerfully with a cheerful heart? Are you giving what God has put on your heart to give? I don't think I give 10%, but I give what we can give and I, and I have no qualms about it. I don't look at it and go, maybe I need to change. Oh, I, I hate the fact that that's going. No, I cheerfully give. And then I, we give to all kinds of other ministries and so on through other ways and, and, and venues. So again, how is that teaching going to change? Is it just going to be the name tithing is taken off and now you still, you know, your salvation is at stake if you're not giving an offering? Is the offering still going to be used as a, as a carrot dangled out in front of them to get more? That's what we're watching for. Again, is this a, a false humility to stand up here and for people to go, oh my goodness, look at what he did. Let's give more. Because that could be it too. I mean, there's so many things because, again, I have known this man as a forked tongue serpent for years. I've watched him preach and I've watched him speak and these things where he is duplicitous in the things that he says. So I do not trust him. I don't trust that this is him going, well, you know what? Throw out all those old books because I'm about to write a whole bunch more that I'm going to get you to buy. And they're going to cost more. Because it's 2022 and inflation, y'all. So throw out the books that you paid $14.99 for and get yourself ready to pay the $24.99 for the new books that are coming out. And y'all better make sure you buy them because you reap what you sow. Is that what we're going to get? I don't know. And again, all I can do is say we give this man the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to look at him and go, you're, you're, you're preaching you're repenting. I'm going to I'm going to step back and and go, okay, let's see if you continue on bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. And if you do that, praise God, Creflo. You know, I've heard guys talk about are you going to give money back? You know, I love what Kirk Kennedy said uh on the last episode of um Cross Examine. Do I see Zacchaeus in this? Where is Zacchaeus in this? Okay, is Creflo up in the tree? Or is he hiding, you know, behind the tree? That's what we're wondering. You know, is he going to give back? I mean, and, and I, I don't expect it. I, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, Creflo, for this to be true repentance, you have to give back half of everything and four times from everybody you, you, you know, you've uh, stolen from and blah, blah, blah. I'm not, but... Some kind of, of give back would be great to truly see you put money where the mouth is. But we'll see. And again, I mean, are you bearing fruit in keeping with repentance? That is the bottom line. And that is what we will watch for. And that is what we'll wait for. And we'll see where he goes. And I'm praying that it's genuine. I'm praying that he has truly repented and is really going to, you know, be this guy that is repentant and uh, and changes the way that he preaches. And the gospel of grace will be preeminent over the gospel of prosperity um, and the gospel of health and wealth and word faith. We'll wait to see it. So there you go, guys. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to watch. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, share, comment, questions, comments, snide remarks. I'll take all, snide remarks. I'll take all the smoke. Uh, you know, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I got another bell ringing over here. I'm getting text messages in the middle of my podcast. Probably my wife going, are we going roller skating or not? Yes, we are. I'm done. Thank you guys for watching as always. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Till next time. Soli Deo Gloria.